My name is Boy Andrew. I come from Bali. It has been a long journey if I'm to talk about where I'm just from. It is a journey of experience. But I've learned a lot how to live just like a lion. It's one of the animals that inspires me in my heart. I lived in a family of yeah, my dad and my mom, but she passed away in 2002. And I think that was the beginning <laughs> of the true life, how to live like a man. That was a time when I, my dad started taking alcohol, you know, with stress, when you love someone so much with all your heart. So he started taking alcohol and he started losing his job opportunities. That was the beginning of the downfall of our needs as children that we're supposed to get from our parents. Also, that's when my life started adapting the life of street life. So my dad was also rude, you know, due to alcohol. He could forget that now this is my child and he used to do anything that he could do. Yeah. I knew that it is not him and that is alcohol. I didn't mind of what he's doing, but there is a time that reached, I started staying out of the house, you know. <laughs> I sleep in a cinema show. I first wait when people are all out, <laughs> and then I head myself down of the chairs. So when they lock me inside, I get to know that now I have a safe room where to sleep. So I started sleeping in the cinema room for some quite a period. So when they found out that there was someone sleeping inside, so I was kicked out. Actually, I was almost taken to the police. They thought that I was a thief, <laughs> yeah. Some relatives heard about this. They had to take me back to the village in Imbali. They took me to Crisco Christian School. That's the time when I got to know Christ. I gave my life to Christ and I didn't know more about Christ. But due to the situation that I was going through, I was forced to seek who is this man they always talk to, who is God, who is Christ. And he started working in my life. That was in primary. I was seeing people being sponsored. I was like, God, I also want to get a sponsor, you know. <laughs> you know, I was loving that kind of life when I see people, they have everything, all needs. They are not worried of school fees. But for me, I was at school where now I'm, I'm, I'm worried, you know, I don't know who is going to take care of me. But my grandma used to take care of me because uh, when my dad lost the job, now they started to take care of me. I was also kind of this person, still a bit of street life in me because I wasn't fully into Christ. And then they started providing everything for me. My auntie got an opportunity to work here, Madame Grace. So that's when I got a sponsor, two of them. They started taking care of me, sponsoring me. But remember, I wasn't good in class. Remember, of my education standards were low due to the street life. So I was this kind of person. I didn't know more how to read, writing. It was another problem. Remember, I'm going now to P6. One year left to sit for my P7 to be a candidate. So I was a semi-candidate, but still my level of education was poor. So when they took me to Crisco, I had, they had to change me to another school because I wasn't good enough. So I went to St. Edward's Junior Academy. That's when I got an opportunity to study from there as a candidate. It was like a miracle. I got 13. And then the ministry here was like, 13? No. He got he was almost calling 999, you know. I was getting ungraded in some of the papers. And I remember the last time when I brought my, my results, they gave me another chance to study here in Mukono. That's where I finished my senior four. But even that period, to cut it short, there's a level where in senior three, things were not working out. But there was something that I was sticking art, that is the passion, the heart in art. I was so inspired with the nature itself. 
I was like, God, I want to be an artist. But I tell you, I didn't know the full story of the full theme of being art. But he just blessed me with everything. I started being into activities of music, <laughs> dance, and drama at times, and also drawing. And so he was like, Andrew, I give you everything, but it's a choice now. Choose what you want. My auntie told me, Andrew, I think I know where, what is the best for you. You need to go in an art school. I went to Entebbe. To be honest, I didn't have enough materials for art. I was scared for the course. But the only thing I had, the strength to stand for the course. Vision could provide me tuition, accommodation and feeding. But one thing I learned, there is no money is an island, no matter whether you're rich or poor. But there is the principles that we need to fall in life and that is the neighbor behind you. I started learning how to associate with the people, the rich and the poor. At the end of the semester, I had the whole course, course projects. <laughs> yeah, it was very inspiring. And then one day, one of my friends, they were asking me, how do you do it, Andrew? Do vision pay for everything? I was like, no. Sometimes they give us, and they give us a, also a space to learn how to survive. Because in this world, there's nothing for free. Sometimes we have to go through tough situations to grow. And I thank Vision for that because they made me to grow. I just think if they could, I, I, I was thinking if at all they gave me everything, I don't think whether I would have been where I am. But before finishing school, I remember I couldn't believe that it was me, the time of graduation. I was here, I didn't have anything. I wasn't prepared for the graduation. They had a text, t -t -t -t. Andrew, tomorrow there's a graduation. It's like, I don't have this, I don't have, but is that a problem? No, I need to find a solution. I went to Mama Maria, I was like, Mama, tomorrow is my graduation, but I don't have the things that I, maybe the clothing and everything. So she was like, okay, let me call, maybe in the container they, there are some clothes, maybe you can get anything from there. I went, there were no size for me. But I believe I have seen what God has done in my life. I tell you, there was a gentleman, saw one of the beautiful paintings that I've done. I didn't believe that really it was his life behind it. And this is the gentleman who told me, Andrew, did you sell that painting? I was like, no, I don't sell paintings. I sell the story behind the painting. And then I narrated everything about the story. I didn't know that it was his life. I was like, how much is that story? I was like, $500. <laughs> it just came out of my, you know, because I knew the worthiness of the story. I was like, $500. I was like, okay, I'm taking it. I got everything that day because it was a day for my graduation. I wasn't prepared for it. And when I went to school, I was dressed well and I thought maybe first class clothes, you know. I didn't know about the documents behind me, my performance, I didn't know anything. Then suddenly someone sent me a program of the, of the session. I saw my name first class. I was so emotional. Who am I to get this? Such a growing fine God for all that kind of struggle. The sleepless nights, the time I used to spend going to work for the, some little money. Also, I used to walk into the garage to raise some money for the materials. All the struggle, I got to know that everything we work for it. God pay us, the, we got the reward indirectly that we can't imagine. One thing that pained me 
there was no one behind me among my family no one knew the day <laughs> no one cared for who was there for me apart from mama maria sent me one friend called claudia she was there for me she was like a sister to me she was there and really had fun but there was no one in my family to testify to see what god has done i started learning also in life that at times friends around us it's the pure family I came back with from entebbe came back uh, I came back here in Vision. We celebrated uh, with Mama Maria and it was wow. But all that, it meant nothing to me. Even the paper. I had the paper, but I was asking myself then, what next? The only thing I had to think of, giving back. That's what counted most in my heart. I was like, I need to find a way to give back to Vision. I need to find a way how to say thank you to the sponsors and maybe to leave something like not just a legacy, but just a significance and a service to appreciate of what they have done into our lives. I know on behalf of other students who are there, I decided to say maybe we need something practical, not theory, not to show the paper, the diploma, the certificates that we get and we hang. I started thinking of something of value for the society to give back. It started small. I started with one of my friends, Chebeti. We made a sculpture along the gates of Vision for Africa to show love. From there, it went on growing. We made other sculptures and paintings all over the ministry. Still, my heart wasn't contented. I felt like giving the best out of me, the best of my fullest for the ministry. And I always pray to God, maybe to use us beyond our fullest. And one day, Mama Maria found me painting from the garage down. She's like, young man, what are you doing? I was like, I like to display my works for people to see them. Just being in the house, it doesn't make sense. And then she offered us this big place to display the works. At first, I was alone in this room. I felt lonely, I was like, God, I need a team of artists, a family, creative artists. And then my dream came to pass. I got a team of people that I work with. There's a lot that I've achieved in this ministry through giving back. But there is one thing I promise God, I won't just work for money, but I always serve him indirect and it's really our dream to change our story the backgrounds and history because there is one thing i've learned history is history and when we overlook into the histories sometimes they either put us down or they make us focus where what we want to be and where we're going and right now we can see where we're going we're not overlooking at the history. History just help us to determine the future, what we want and what we want to make some bit of changes and the life we want to be. And this painting describes every child in Vision for Africa, how he came to be into the ministry. I believe among them who came like this kid, so hopeless, but the door opened day came when the door opened for me just like this child and we received the light through the sponsors they're trying to squeeze their hand to open the door but they can't do it by themselves but there are more people outside there I believe who always come to try to open for them the door and they receive light and there are most of them that have received the light in their hearts in their needs and on behalf i want to thank mama marie and the husband and my sponsors for having you know 
raise a hand of help upon my life and Mama Maria for that heart of giving, of opening doors for many children and also sponsors who are there. I want to thank you for the great support, please never give up. Many things happen. Sometimes we tend to hope, to lose hope, but we shouldn't lose hope for the sake of the young generations outside there.